All right, well, hello everyone. This is the culmination of a three-part series about how to set up a Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi VPN. So you can use a Raspberry Pi to connect back to your network for backups and things like that from anywhere in the world. This was actually requested by a few different people on both YouTube and Reddit. So feel free to leave in the comments below what kind of tutorials you'd also like to see. All right, so as I said before, this is the last part of the three-part series on setting up a Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi VPN. So this video is going to be on how to set up a Raspberry Pi as a VPN client and automatically connect back to your Raspberry Pi VPN server using OpenVPN. This way you can do things like have a remote backup that automatically runs, but you keep it at a friend or family member's house. That way, if your house gets destroyed for whatever reason, your data is still backed up. I actually went over that in this video right here. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and SSH into our Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi we're gonna be SSHing into is first the Raspberry Pi running OpenVPN server from the last video. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the OpenVPN config folder. And as we can see right here, there's this server.config file. So what we're gonna do is we're going to edit it. And you need root privileges to do this. All right, so this server line right here states what subnet the clients connecting over the OpenVPN server are going to be connecting their IPs from. And so the way I would recommend doing this is having it very similar to your main network subnet. So my main network subnet is 192.168.1.x. So we're going to do it 192.168.3.0. And that basically means that all the IP addresses will be given will be 192.168.3.x. The reason I chose three instead of two is I've already set up a guest network with two. All right, another thing we are gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this client to client is uncommented. This is used anytime you're connecting two different VPN clients back to your network and want them to be able to communicate. So I would recommend turning this on unless you have a good reason not to. All right, and from there, that's all we need. So we're just gonna go ahead and X out of it and save it. All right, so now what we have to do is create a new OpenVPN config file for our backup. So we don't wanna have a password here. So we're gonna run pyvpn no pass. That way we don't have to authenticate and our remote Raspberry Pi can auto connect. And we don't have to really worry about anybody getting the certificate because if they've got their certificate, they've already got access to the network because we're not gonna be sending it over the internet ever. So we're gonna name the client Raspi and I'm gonna be using this for a long-term backup. So I'm gonna have it be the max 3,650 days, which is 10 years time. All right, and as easy as that, we have created a new OpenVPN certificate for this. And if we CD into this folder, we can see it. And right here, we can see the raspi.openvpn file. So now we're gonna exit out of the server and oh, I'll give us some room. We're gonna go ahead and SSH into the client Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi that's going to the remote location. All right, so on the Raspberry Pi client, we're gonna be using app git to install OpenVPN. So we're just gonna run sudo app git update to update our links. All right, and so now that all the packages have updated, we're gonna run sudo app git install openvpn. And this is gonna go ahead and install openvpn and all of its dependencies. All right, so now that that has it all installed, we'll give us some room again. And now we're gonna go ahead and go to the openvpn root folder, which is in etc open and right here is the OpenVPN config folder. All 
All right, sorry. Uh, I'm, I may or may not have forgotten exactly where the OpenVPN file was saved on my server. So we're going to be using secure copy to copy over that OpenVPN profile from our server back to our client. So secure copy works over SSH. So if we're on our client, we're going to say secure copy, the SSH of the server, and then followed by the absolute location of the file in the server. Then I just put a period here, so it will save it right here. Finally, we need root access. So I'm just going to hit OK. All right, and now if we do an LS, we'll see right here that it worked. One thing we're going to have to do real quick is we're going to have to rename it with a sudo move. So we've got to rename it from a .ovpn to a .config. That's something that will get a lot of people, including myself. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if we can get this to work. So we're going to start the OpenVPN service by doing sudo system control enable OpenVPN. Ah, I am awful at spelling today. All right, so now let's see if it worked by typing IP address. So it's not worked yet, so we're going to do a sudo reboot. All right, so now after our system just rebooted, we SSH back in. And so now let's see IP ADDR again. And look right here, beautiful, this tunnel zero. That means that our IP address has in fact worked. However, we're going to have to SSH back into the server to change a setting real quick because it gave us the wrong IP address. So we're going to SSH back into the server that hosts the OpenVPN. And we're going to go into the OpenVPN config folder again. And we're going to go into this CCD folder. And right here is our raspi config file. So we're just going to do a sudo nano raspi. This right here dictates what local IP address our client is given when it connects. So we're going to change that to 192.168.3.1.35. One thirty five. That's because on my regular domain network, this Raspberry Pi is 192.168.1.135. So when it connects remotely, I'll just use .3.135 to keep it the same. All right, and we'll just exit out of it. Yes, and save. So now we're going to have to go back in and exit and do another reboot. And when we hit exit, we exited back into a Raspberry Pi client. We were SSHing from one Raspberry Pi to another Raspberry Pi. It's a little confusing there. So we've SSHed back in. So let's figure out what the IP address is. And look right here. Perfect. We now have that IP address 192.168.3.135. But if we go and try to exit out of this and SSH into it, from our Mac, we're going to not be able to. It's just going to time out. But if we go into the Raspberry Pi server, which is hosting the VPN and SSH into it, we will be able to connect. So what's going on? Well, right now, there is this IP address 192.168.3.135. And nobody else on the network knows how to get to it. That's because our router does not know where it is. So what are we going to do? Well, the first and the simplest solution is nothing. So right now we can connect to a Raspberry Pi open VPN server and use that to SSH into any of the clients we need to. This is an option and it's probably fine for most cases as backups and stuff will still work. The next probably best solution is to go into your router and add a routing table. All right, so I've just gone in and logged in to my router. I have a Synology router. And if I go into Network Center, Local Network, and Static Route right here, I have this option right here to set up a routing table. A routing table is what your router generates whenever it's doing things. Basically, it takes all the internet addresses on the internet, and it tells you how to get to them. But if all the traffic is behind your network, nobody's going to know how to do that. 
And so what we're gonna do is we're going to tell it that any traffic looking on the 192.168.3 domain, it's going to be going through that Raspberry Pi VPN server. So all we do here is we go create, and we're gonna say the network destination. So basically anything, and our mask is gonna be 255, 255, 255, zero. So basically any traffic that's 192.168.3.x. And then finally our gateway. So our gateway is that Raspberry Pi server, which has this IP address 192.168.1.130. And it is a LAN interface. So if we go ahead and create that and save it, let's see what happens when we SSH back into our Pi. All right, so now we're on my local Mac again, and we're gonna try to SSH into that VPN. And as we can see right here, it has successfully worked. Why has that worked? So now my Mac just talked to my router and said, hey, I don't see this 192.168.3 anywhere on our network. Do you know where it is? And then my router's job is to route it in the correct direction. It says, oh, it looks through its IP tables and says, oh, hey, look, we'll set that up. Will says, anytime you're looking for something at 192.168.3.x to go through 192.168.1.130, which is the VPN Raspberry Pi server. Well, now let's say you don't have a smart router and you can't do that. The next step is going to be to set it up for your specific machine and tell your machine where to look. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just hit delete and save. So now if we try to go back into it, it timed out. That's because we took away the information telling it where to go. All right. So the third option right here is to actually set up the routing tables on our computer to know where to go. So if you're on Linux or Mac, you can use just the route command. I would only recommend doing this if you know what you're doing and be very careful. I'll go ahead and clear it to give us some room. We're going to type sudo for root access, route the command, and then the subnet we're looking at, which is that 192.168.3.0 backslash 24, which is the net mask. And then we're going to say where to look, which is 192.168.1.130. sudo route add we got to add it so as we can see right here it's just said that anything we're looking for that's 192.168.3.x we're going to go and ask 192.168.1.130 which is the vpn server where it is and my vpn server will know where it is because it created them so now let's try it and see what happens Hey, it worked. All right, and it was just as simple as that. We've gone through now, and you can take this Raspberry Pi and place it anywhere in the world. All you've got to do is give it internet access, and it will always come to your home network and VPN itself back in. Then, depending on which of the three options you chose, you'll always still be able to connect to it to configure it and stuff. Another thing, if you are leaving it at a friend's house, and it does start messing up for whatever reason, as electronics generally do, you can have them just pull the power and plug it back in. And the VPN will reconnect on boot up. All right, well, I hope you found that enjoyable. Feel free to leave a comment below about what you think and any other videos you'd like to see me make. I actually had a lot of fun making this one. I learned a lot from it. All right, well, have a good one. Bye.